Uh, hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the New Again podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Stephen Jakes, and thank you for joining us for this episode, which is episode three. And in this episode, we'll be discussing the uh, the complications and the excitement you have around uh, and regarding water leaks and uh, the, the, long, the long-term issues that generally uh, can uh, affect your car uh, if you do have water leaks. But before we get into the information of uh, water leaks and how they affect your car, I would like to introduce our resident guru, the one and only Gary Ray. Uh, Gary's uh, been involved in the industry for almost 33 years and has a wealth of knowledge as an expert in this field, and uh, especially around water leaks. So uh, let's introduce uh, Gary Ray. Uh, so good evening, Gary. How are you doing, my friend? How has your week been? Yeah, very good, actually. We've had a lot of water leaks to deal with because, of course, it's been raining. <laughs> yeah, well, the weather hasn't been great. Um, so uh, it's good to have you back on the podcast again. And so we're going to be uh, diving into the information and uh, just uh, revealing some of the problems, some of the causes, some of the reasons why and how we can resolve them when it comes to water leaks. So, okay. so, uh, so first and foremost, really, I guess where we really want to go is... Uh, uh, what is the problems generally with water leaks? I know the problem is a water leak, but they come in many shapes and sizes. So do you want to expand on that a little bit more and uh, and tell our listeners uh, exactly uh, the complications and how these can uh, manifest in your car? Okay, so uh, first off, um, there are varying different problems that are associated with water leaks. Um, and most people tend to find whatever it was that they found and think that's the problem. So uh, perhaps I might explain in a different way, but you know, obviously, if you well, what to... you're saying is they're aware of a water leak and they think it's the only one. No, um, well, that is one of the things, but no, I'm talking more about the fact that they think the problem is that they've got a steamed up back window and there's water running down it. So uh, you know, that's the problem. And actually, um, later on, they might find there is a water leak, and then you say, well, uh, now the spare wheel area is the problem. The wheels floating in water. And that's the problem. Yeah. But obviously, uh, what I can tell you is, of course, they are two of the problems that water causes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, somebody else uh, might find the problem because they go to alarm the car and they press the button and any the hazard lights don't flash like they normally do and go beep, you know, it just doesn't. So that's, of course, their problem. Somebody else might be um, just, I don't know, leaning over to undo the glove box and can smell something funny and think, hmm, smells a bit musky. So they've got, that's the Or problem. get in their car and find out they get a wet bum. <laughs> <laughs> Great one. There is a few like that. Yeah. But that is, then, of course, that's the problem. And in fact, that is not even their problem. It's the wet bum feeling that's their problem. Yeah. It's the wet bum that's the other people who are looking at them's problem, yeah, isn't it? When you're walking yeah. into work and they're looking at you with the wet, wet trousers or whatever. So, um, yeah, so I can tell you a little bit more about the other problems that are associated with it. Um, you know, I suppose we do them in order in, in, you know, most the way most people find it. I think initially it's um, wet, a wet carpet somewhere. 90% of car water leaks is the wet carpet problem. You know, you think, oh, why is that carpet wet? It's like this strange thing that happens in your mind. You think, oh... I've just, uh, you know, leant behind the seat or I was vacuuming the car the weekend or I, you know, I picked up something like a pair of jeans that had fallen off the back seat and then they were wet. And then, you know, uh, then I feel, oh, that's a problem. So then you think, you know, your brain sort of wonders for a while. You think, oh, maybe it's I spilt something. A drink or something. Yeah, yeah. or somebody spilt something in there or... You know, and then, or maybe you left the door open or left the window open, and then you start asking, maybe they did, and that window was left open. Maybe somebody's been in and closed that window, left it open. It poured a rain last night, and all yeah. that stuff. So, a wet carpet in its own right is not really much of an issue, is it? Really, you'd think it might dry out, and that would be the next thing that goes through people's minds. You think, oh, well, it's wet, but it'll probably dry out, even if, and you know, it's in and out of your mind in seconds. You then you pulled up to a roundabout and you're driving and you're on your way to work and that particular problem is not a problem. You've got enough problems in life. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> so, so I guess there's obviously many issues that come with the water leaks and, uh, and I suppose being in, in, in the industry of fixing them, um, are they generally hard to find? Um, some are very easy. Sometimes they're staring, staring you in the face Sometimes it could be as simple as just a blocked pipe or something. Now, you might be wondering what blocked pipes you're talking about. 
um, you know, there are little channels in cars that are designed to let the water out. Um, you know, most people, you wouldn't know that, but, you know, um, if you take underneath the bonnet on cars, the water runs down the screen and, and into what the area, like a grill bit where your wipers are, and that's called the scuttle area. And uh, the water rolls there, then it's not, it doesn't roll over the top of your engine, it then goes down through there, and there's usually drain areas there that allow the water to go into the wings or drop down through and to the ground, you know, so... That's one place uh, that water runs away, and of course, uh, sometimes a bit, lots and lots of dirt. If you're parking the car under a tree or that sort of thing, then you get mud in it and dirt or bits of leaves or those pine needles, and they just stops the water rolling away. And then you know, sometimes then that little scuttle area then fills up, and then lets water into the car. So that's one one of the things. So that's that in general terms, that's an easy find, really. Um, sometimes it could be that. Uh, you've had a windscreen fitted is another common one. Um, you know, when the guys put those screens on, they're trying to put them on in on a, all conditions, you know, and sometimes they're doing it outside or sometimes it can be a heavy screen and you've got to lean over and try and place that screen onto the sealant. I don't know if anyone's actually ever seen it done, but it's pretty crude, to be honest. They have the trim around the edge and um, what they have to do is take the trim off and then you've got this seal, this like, almost like a black bath sealant, and, uh, you know, the window's stuck in. And, you know, obviously then they put the trim back and you don't see all the sticky bits. But So the trim doesn't really do anything from a waterproof point of view. The trim's just there to make it all look nice and neat. Yeah. Um, but, of course, the sticky bit is is the sealant. And that's not so easy to get right. First off, it's got the surface have all got to be cleaned properly. And uh, they prime it with a primer so that it all makes a proper bond. And then you've got to very accurately push that screen on. And, you know, I sympathise with the guys having to do it. You know, um, if it's a heavy screen, you've got to sort of put the suckers on it and lift it over the bonnet, not leaning against the wing of the car, and then gently place it onto that seal perfectly well. So sometimes it doesn't quite go exactly as you want it to. I guess, is, is that the same when it comes to sunroofs? Uh, a sunroof is leaking for a different reason. Most people don't realise that a sunroof is sitting in a cassette. The old pop-up ones don't, of course, but they're gone and, you know, you don't see many of those. There's some modern pop-up ones, but they're still in, more, in what I, could, I would describe it as a cassette. So if you're looking up at your sunroof inside the car, you're sat in the driver's seat, you're looking up at an opening that may be 18 inches by, uh, you know, two feet wide, um, or some are, some are longer, but you know the cassette itself will be double that size because, of course, as you open that open it, it goes into the headlining, doesn't it? You see it go away. It's not going off. Some of them do go above the roof, but most of them are going into what I call the cassette, and it's that plastic cassette that has to take a bit of water. Um, first off, the the sunroof doesn't close and make a perfect seal, so when it's closed there is a little bit of seepage of water that gets in and it's designed to fall into that cassette and down little pipes. And those little pipes often do get blocked. And what you don't know, most people don't know, is there's often four. So uh, you may have uh, water blocking at the back ones as well. So um, just a word of advice here. So that's an obvious one. Um, I do find a lot of people, I've got to tell you this while we're on this subject, a lot of people just poke the poke the thing down the hole there's all sorts of people on youtube saying get your you know get a pipe cleaner or a, a, a coat hanger and poke it through and then wedge it down there and try and unblock it but of course it usually is a rubber pipe and and the, the, you know they're not great with a poke with a something like that poking down and yeah you can disconnect them and then you've got water other problems so or i mean is there more complicated the ones like where water can maybe coming in through the back of the dashboard or coming underneath through the through the oh yeah the bottom of oh the, yeah yeah the yeah. Chassis. yeah so uh, go back to the easy ones there's a couple more a couple of more easy ones that you know if you're listening now you think you can have a little go then have a look online sometimes people will tell you what the problem is and you know the common problems but um, so yeah, unblocking those things like that. You need to clean all the recess area out. I see many people have unblocked them, and then the garage has unblocked it, and then they've left all the dirt still in there to go back down. So that's a sort of little mistake that people make. So anyway, so something more complicated might be yes on the what we call the bulkhead. 
So you've got right up underneath the pedals, and of course the carpet goes right up under the dash. You've got a thick underlay, and then obviously then you've got that where it goes up under, because that's there to stop sound, as well as, you know, to look all right when you're leaning up under there. But the, it has thick underlay, stopping the sound from the engines. Of course, you know, you you get little grommets and plugs and different hoses that go through it, the radiator hoses and <coughs> bonnet catch and, you know, all sorts of stuff. Even the power lead come, has to come to the ignition through there and even your steering column has to... It's quite amazing how many holes there are in that bulkhead and uh, some of them are not meant to be there, so... Of course, uh, you know, sometimes you'll get leakage through there and it's very, very difficult to find because it's not obvious. And equally, another one might be even on a weld. So you're now talking about under there and then you've got a welded seam. So, uh, of course, you know, that's a much more difficult one. Some more difficult ones can be actually very obvious to us, but we've had many, many over the years where they've been to everywhere, all and sundry, and we, it's, it's absolutely blatantly obvious. But... Water's, water's a funny thing. I mean, when I say it's blatantly obvious, I don't want to make everybody else sound like idiots. What I'm talking about is sometimes water can come in from the top and end up at the bottom. That's normally what happens. So people assume that if it's wet in the back, it's coming from the back. And that's why some things can be obvious to us because, you know, if you're parking the car with the front up, then the water's going to end up in the back, isn't it? Yeah, so, absolutely. So you do find that people are looking completely in the wrong place, you know, and... That's why you you know you often find you say well no it's you're at the wrong end of the car yeah absolutely. that's why it can be obvious to us yeah and I suppose if you're trying to do that yourself that's something that's going to be very difficult because you, unless you've got the tools or the resources to do that uh, especially with the uh, under the bulkhead for example you're going to yeah. just a minefield really of getting that undone and putting it back together and that's really when you want a professional really to do that who's going to be able to identify it locate it and also have, be in a position to repair it. Yeah, I mean, there are still things you can do yourself. I'm not going to say that every car is very complicated. You can have a read-up online, and there are some people out there. There's quite some good footage of people taking lights off. A couple of little things that I would recommend. Don't pull a light off to then see if it's sealed. You need to make sure it's actually leaking because before you pull it off. Because you, people do it. They pull it off, put it back on, pull it back on, put it back on, back on yeah. not realise they've fixed it or they haven't. Um, go back to a little bit more about the problems that water causes. Um, we were talking about what, you know, about uh, at the beginning, we were talking about the, you know, what you see as a steamed up window. There's some other things like that, that I think you need to know about, and that is the modern car is full of electronics and if you leave water in your car, it can lead to other problems. And the, the, when I was talking about the hazard lights, uh, we've recently had uh, a Range Rover in that um, had a leaky screen and the water was flooding in both sides and uh, coming in over, on, on down that bulkhead, as we were just talking about, and you, the guy just had no idea. And you're talking about uh, 20 litres of water in that car. And on one side, the carpet's still dry. And on the other side, you can start to feel it sopping wet. So you actually only thought you had water on one side. There's still, let me guess, there's at least 10 litres on the other side that's dry. So it, that particular car now is a, um, a, you know, bear in mind, I'm not going to say all cars like this. This is a Range Rover that was fully loaded, one of the top of the range ones. But at the moment, the bill stands at £17,000. Um, needs a new wiring loom apparently they've got I mean God knows what the size of a wiring loom on a Range Rover is like it must be like an elephant's trunk with all the wires running through but that had all got wet and uh, and you know all those plugs that it plugs into so the, the dealership's decided that it needs a new one they don't want ongoing problems so they've got to put a new one in um, cause, because of electrics can give you problems later of course you get a bit wet or a bit damp yeah which we're going to get to in a little while oh ok yeah, yeah yeah so yeah, so there are some other things. Corrosion, it does. They do corrode. Uh, if you can't get the bolts out of the seats if they're being a bit too corroded for too long, cars are designed to be weather protected from the outside inwards. So the underside of the car is all weather protected, but they don't put that same stuff on the inside outside because they're not they're not expecting water to be on the inside. So you tend to find that there's a lot of things inside a car that doesn't have any corrosion protection on it at all yeah so they do rust and there are rusty bits but it's not going to rust like an old car where your feet are going to suddenly push through the corrosion problems more are about um, electronic connections and you know things like bolts and fixings, that you can't, yeah. 
Yeah, and loads of other things that, that water gets to, even though it's on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's generally, really, I suppose, the main, the main common uh, areas that mm. uh, water leaks are found and the issues they can cause and how uh, you can identify those. Mm. Um, so let's bring it round to how you would, how would, how do you get round to fixing that? I mean, generally, how do you fix them and and mm. what do you, and what to do after it's been fixed? Um, right. Okay. So uh, I'll use this analogy. If you were looking for a bunch of keys um, and you went around the house, you're just leaving, and then you um, you go to the kitchen and you can't find it. Go to the bedroom. Oh, there they are. You run down the stairs. You're back in the car. You're gone. Um, water leaks are not like that. You know, you're not going to. You know, we used to do that in the old days. Find the water leak. Run back down. You know, <laughs> there you go. It's fixed and done. Um, but we've worked out over the years that sometimes cars can have more than one water leak, maybe you hadn't noticed in the beginning, um, or it's just that the seals and the little gridgets and wadgets and whatever you want to call them, they're all the, of the same age as the car. So we've devised a 28-point check that we check a lot of the known faults on generic cars, as well as now we've got a database with um So you're saying that cars. specific cars generally have a repetition of problems? Uh, general, yes. Not general, but you know yes. what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there, yeah. There's, there's, a, there's, common, there's a common weakness. Yeah, like, like a, a Corsa, for example, 90% of Corsas will have uh, the pedal assembly underneath. It, it comes away. There's a plate that the pedal's attached to. Um, what most people who've got Corsas may not know is that it does the same thing on the other side. But on those left-hand drive um, ones, if you take a, a chassis that's made or a shell that's made as a Corsa, they make it for the left and the right hand drive courses. So of course on the right hand drive, which we've all got in the UK, your pedals are attached to a plate that adjusts the other side. So you're pushing your pedals up and down and then the other side, it's doing the clutch arrangements and the brakes and all the other bits. We don't always think about these things, do we? But um, that plate comes away because you're pushing the pedals and the plate's moving a little bit. And eventually the seal around the edge of that plate goes. Um, but for those of you who've got the courses on the other side is the same plate, but it's a blanking plate, basically. And uh, so on the other side, if you reverse the scenario um, and, you know, you, it's a left-hand drive car, then they would have the pedals there and then the plate on that side. So when we repair the courses, you know, initially we started in a, few long year, a lot of years ago, we were repairing the plate and then somebody calling up and saying the same on the passenger side and maybe six months, a year later. Yeah. So we repair both. Of course, now it's standard procedure. The actual passenger side is dead easy to do because it doesn't have all the pedals attached to it. So, you know, we'll repair both sides. And going back to what we're talking about, how you're fixing them, how we do it, we would... Uh, we won't just grab the keys and run. We'll, we'll say, right, OK, now we've found on a Corsa that it, they come in. We don't assume that on that car that's going to be the only problem. Yeah, I was going to say, there, there may be other reasons. There may it. be others. So what we do is we will we'll follow a generic uh, list and then we go on a database and look at all the courses we've had in, scroll up and down and say, ah, yeah, there's there's two or three other things. The Clio is a, t- a typical example they have the sunroof problem and uh, it's the cassette itself loses its attachment to the roof. So people think it's blocked and so on. And then there's even guys on YouTube showing how to repair it. And I, I want to dive in on the picture and go, oh my God, they're not doing it right because there's a few key things they're missing. Um, but at the same time, you could assume you fixed your water leak if you found and fixed that cassette. Uh, the correct way to do it, by the way, is just take it apart and then reseal it and the cassette is then squashed together with the sealant. And we've got a company that we know that do that for us. Um, but uh, also on the Clio's, they have a couple of grommets in the boot. And you open up the boot, and either side next to your back lights, if you're listening to this, those little grommets, there's a dead easy fix. You push the grommets out, they're all robbing it around. So you either put new grommets in, or you clean them up properly and put a primer on, is how we do it, and then put a sealer on it, and then squash them in and make sure that sealer goes tight. Because I don't know what the grommets are there for. <laughs> Some, maybe for another model or something, yeah. I don't know. But... You know, so th- that's what we found over the years. You, you know, you you could have a a, a a common problem on a car, but there's also a couple of other little pointers to find. Yeah. So, so what's the so what's the process then? You find the water leak, you then fix the problem, and then what do you dry the if dry it yes. out after or what, yeah, I mean, what, the right what's, what's the process involved? The fixing of the problem, ninety nine percent or ninety percent, I'd say, of cars we can fix. You know, most of the time. 
they are these problems we're talking about. Occasionally you might get one where a bumper's completely stuck on, maybe somebody's involved in an accident, and then some repair person has put, put it on permanently, you know, and we've had that before. Or also you might get something like an engine's got to come out to fix it, and it becomes uneconomical. But most of the time, a fixes, you know, are the, the common things we're talking about. And uh, it could just be ordering a new night a light seal, and usually we'd order the other one, or even two new lights, you know, and then resealing them, putting them on. Uh, when we seal them, we don't put them on permanently. <laughs> We've got a special sealant that's uh, it's um, resilient to the heat changes. So those of you listening about the heat sealants and stuff, you it's like a gel, but it goes on, but it, it's not it won't melt when it gets really really hot. Of course, we think about these things in the winter. But of course, you don't want to put a, something on there to do that. So we've got stuff that's suitable to seal these things all year round. So yeah, drying them. Um, most people don't really get the drying. Um, you think, oh well, that's fixed. Now they dry on its own. And I've heard people have collected the cars from garages and called us and said. Yeah, I don't know what they did. They didn't really say much about the drying. <laughs> you say, oh my God, oh really? You know, because you kind of, you almost switch off. The water stopped coming in. Well, imagine if you had a bath and you filled it, filling it up with water, and then you switch the tap off, you know, and you go, you know, well, if you can't see the water, it doesn't matter. Is there a yeah, carpet yeah. over it? Yeah. Is it the water dry? leaks fixed, but the water's still inside? <laughs> it's like. Yeah, but the reality is that That it's a natural psychology that psyche that it's not a lot of water and it's not you know. But the honest truth is that your car can become its own little weather system and the the water will never get out because it is a tin box and basically you get the water up the windows because it's it's condensating going on the glass rolling back down and then finding its way back to the bottom so to get the water out the carpet 99 percent of the time has to come up unless you haven't got a wet foot well yeah then it doesn't have to come up if, if it's wet in the boot of course you take the spare out and you bail it out first and then yeah. clean it and mop it and up i would and dry also it. imagine if the chairs are getting wet the, you know the sponge is going to take quite a lot of the water and that needs to dry out as well so imagine the, this the you know, chair one that's an interesting one the, the chair one actually is probably the better one because it, most people, if it's, see, if it's going on that chair, most people see it dripping. So it's going to be fairly obvious when it starts leaking, unless you've been away on holiday and it's. Yeah, been but leaking. I mean, the point is, you still need to have that dried, even if you. Yeah. If you got if you got rid of the, the water leak, you know, there you go, Mister Customer. Yeah. Thank you very much, and he back sits back wet, down, and he goes back to the back wet, to the wet bum back one. to the wet bum <laughs> again. So, and he's not going to be very happy because he's going to think, well, hang on, I mean, I thought I've had this fixed. Yeah. Well, no, well, you have had it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> you have had it. Fixed. Do you know what? Yeah. There's actually a video footage of a mini, and that that was actually the case. Yeah. The, the mini was in there, and the lady said to collected it and it was moulding it as well that's another thing but well, that's what i'm just going to move on to here yeah. because one of the things here is uh what are the other issues that can be created or the other effects by um not drying your car or getting yeah. the water leaks and mold yeah. is obviously one of the things the smells and yeah. obviously the electrics yeah. which we covered but you might want to go into the mold a little bit and the dangers of it and and how you deal with that yeah um we wasn't sure about the mould thing over the years, um, whether to play it down, play it up. I think we just got to play it as it is, um, because certain moulds can make you really ill. We know that. Um, you know, it's a bit like mushrooms and toadstools. So, certain toadstools can make you very, very ill, and you know, certain moulds you can eat on cheese. So. Mould can be, um, you know, under and overrated. What I do know about it is that it wafts around in the car and you find it mainly on things that are organic or where organic stuff is. So you'll find it on seat belts because people invariably been eating while they're driving. There's bits of food getting into the belts. So that doesn't fly. It gets there because it's floating around in the air. So most of the time we find a car gets mouldy if you park it up for a couple of weeks. Um, if you're using it regularly, uh, then of course the mould, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't seem to appear. It doesn't so. settle. Well, it, it's not. Yeah, it's all about mould needs still air, darkness, something organic to grow on, and um, uh, and water. Sounds like my mother-in-law. She's probably <laughs> covered in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but so okay so the serious note then is that i have had i can tell you that every year i have probably five conversations on average with people that are ill um in fact there is a car on our list of videos there if you're you know we send you the videos because you're booked in yeah um and there is somebody on there that had uh all the 
car buffed mm-hmm. up and we made it like new again. So something else we do, just a little plug there. Yeah. Shameless so, one as well, Gary. <laughs> you know, so what that particular gentleman decided to do was take advantage of what we do. So he got the car, he came from the, up north of the country, dropped it off, we found the water leak and then at the same time fixed drive that and then... Uh, he had it all buffed up and made like new again. But the start of the conversation, which I was at, is that he rung and he was very ill. And he said, oh, I'm so ill, God. And he said, I've been off work now, and every time I seem to go back to work, I'm back ill again, you know. And uh, he, he, he was, he, as he was telling me, he was starting putting two and two together. And I was saying, well, is there... Because on our questions, we do, is there mould in the car? And actually, uh, yeah, there was a lot of mould in his car, and of course he was getting Where it was and driving from? it. Uh, it's just north of Birmingham. Did they shut that down? What, Birmingham? Yeah, lock, <laughs> a North London lockdown. A North yeah. Birmingham lockdown. Well, that was the beginning of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think he, he, <laughs> he actually got the car from China off. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, we shouldn't be joking about a subject like that. No, it's just we went off piece a little bit. But anyway, so yeah, so he, he had it fixed and everything else and took advantage. So the mould thing. Uh, yeah, if you leave the car, if you're using the car, that's fine. And some of you might be thinking, oh, we'll give it another month. I've got loads of stuff going on. I need my car and everything yeah. else. So um, it's it's never really a right time to lose your car to get it fixed. Um, but, you know, if you're using it, then I would suggest make sure you get the right mould cleaner and give the mould a good clean. Yeah, because get a damp it... towel, cover it, find it. Yeah. Absolutely. Get... Get a mask on, get some gl- uh, torch, look under everywhere and really spray it with the anti-mould. Make sure the mould, anti-mould product you're using is without the bleach in it because the building ones have got bleach in. So the, you can buy the friendly ones that, you you know, they, they, they tell you no bleach on them and anti-mould the car and be serious about it. Get get it off the seat belts, pull the seat belts out, get under the carpets, get right round in any area... Uh, that you can see that's remotely a chance and give it a good spray and rub it in with a microfiber and make sure you're not breathing it in while yeah. whilst you're doing it. Then use your car, keep air flowing through it. Remember the dark space, don't be putting sheets over it and parking it up with a sheet over it while it's raining. Because I heard of lots of people do that. They say, oh, well, you know, I've got a sheet over it now, which that creates a dark environment with still air, so yeah, you absolutely. get more mould. So if you're using it one couple of quick... Uh, pieces of advice don't use it if you've got electronic problems that could be safety related i mean it doesn't matter too much if your radio is not working of course you can sing but if you um or (laughs) some of us can (laughs) you can't sing steve i know i don't want you to break out in song and then we lose our audience yeah we will no um what i can guarantee that (laughs) so um yeah so you know obviously um you, um, I forgot what I was saying now. <laughs> uh, you're talking about, you're just about to break into song, I think. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, you, so we're back on the mould, yes. you know. So, the the point to make here is that, um, you Are need we to be, about the electrics, about the diagnostics, and not having the radio. And... Yeah, so yeah, okay. So, the mould bit we're done, we're on the bit of the radio, and what we're talking about is if something more serious is not working, like an airbag light comes on. Uh, the airbag lights not I don't think the airbag's just going to blow up by the way I just think what happens is it's telling you there's some kind of circuit problem and, and basically the airbag won't go off if you crash yeah uh, there's others where you know obviously your indicators aren't working there seems to be a common one you know the window one's a funny one as well but a window's not going to really do you much trouble but you know if you put your window down then it might stay down but the uh, of course hazard light ones. Then suddenly you're turning left, and then someone thinks you're turning right. Yeah, so it can it can create some some issues, especially with the electrics and stuff. And there's also the uh, the, the smells as well that can also play a problem. Yeah, and that's what, also another. Pro- it's a set. It's a third third problem. Um, you know, yes, we do antimicrobial products that kill the mold. Usually, if you've got a smell, you've got mold. That's most of the time. So people think, oh well, it's a smell. You know, what's it smell? Well, it smells musty. But that musty is particles of of mould going up your nose. That's basically what it really yes. is. It's not smell. Mould mold doesn't really smell. You know, it's it's particles that are kind of going into you. And, you know, OK, don't be too frightened. But obviously you get too much of it, it gets into your lungs and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a lovely thought. I mean, I thought I had a mould problem in my car, and then I realised I had a Tesco's cheese and onion sandwich from 1984 <laughs> stuck down the back. Underneath the seat. Underneath the seat. <laughs> OK, so you don't die. I was only joking about that. <laughs> yeah. OK, cool. So, um, so 
what so we we obviously now know that what would you suggest to really get rid of the the, the smells really and the problems and yeah. the, the whole thing okay so uh if you're listening to this and you're miles away then i would suggest listen to our diy video there's a very good video on there we get a lot of good feedback from it probably does need updating to be honest we will do it uh, do a one or two more but it does help you realize that first off it could be a straightforward thing but you need to be prepared that it might not be straightforward. Um, and also it helps you help whoever's going to be fixing it for you. So if you've got a garage or, you know, you've got a good guy that manages your car, then you can go to him. But you're not going to him with something that's just a box of tricks. You can actually do a lot of homework on finding out what you think might be wrong with it before you give it to him and then nurse him into doing it. And you need to do that. I think most garages don't really want to know because... It is a box of tricks and it's not their field of expertise. So that's uh, one uh, thing you can do. Uh, or, you know, obviously you can have a go yourself. Um, you know, if you find out that all it is is a backlight, the backlights are dead easy. Most backlights, you can look on YouTube, they tell you how to get them off. Occasionally you might have to drop a bumper, but that's maybe a bit out of your realms in the driveway. But most backlights, there's just three nuts behind them and you sort of undo the plug. The plug bit's often got a little catchy bit on it, so you have to watch YouTube, watch the bloke doing it twice and make sure that you can see you release that little plug and pull it off. Um, just to remind you, uh, don't just pull the light off and have a look. You know, if you think it is the backlight, get a hose pipe, get somebody in the boot and get some water on it and then actually look with a torch and then you can see it coming in before you remove it. Then you can see for sure it's coming in around that back light. You know for sure it is. Then gently lift off the back light and then see the evidence and look very carefully at the seals on it. And then you'll be able to see then uh, if it is the back light, then you what you you know you, you found the problem. Otherwise, you know you you pull it off, put it back on, and the bit I was joking about earlier is that you then think you fixed it. And I, we see people they've gummed it all up, and it, I feel sorry for them. You know they've. And, uh, you know, it, it wasn't the back light and they pulled it on and off and thought it was. So sometimes it can be just a stupid little grommet right next to where you thought the problem was. So that's what I'd do if you were a long way away from us. Uh, if you're local to us, um, then we do have a proper procedure and, you know, it's a well worked out procedure. But we are a garage per se. I mean, we do other things, but you know, we are a bit more expensive than doing it yourself or getting a friend, you know. Yeah. So, obviously, we've got overheads and, you know, and all of that. So, you know, we've got, uh, we got we are going to be a bit more expensive. And, and but the thing is, is, well, you know, the job's going to get done prof professionally and it's going to be done to the best level. Um, whereas if you're doing it yourself, sometimes you're probably going to make mistakes and maybe not get the whole thing done properly or make a mistake whilst repairing it mm. or not repair it properly. So... Um, you know, from my per personal perspective, I'd rather take you to a professional and get it done and not run those risks. Mm. Well, there's, yeah, yeah, okay, so there are still risks. You don't uh, necessarily say it's all fixed and we're driven away and we're all happy and it's done. Nine, nine out of ten cars you can do that with, but, you know, there is always cars that are a pain, you know, they've got more than one hole in. Um, we've had one today, funny enough, really nice couple have come along and... Uh, We've found quite a few. It's a little old Fiesta, and there's been quite a few. So, um, just to you know, we you, you might want to read, but you know, we're not selling this to you. We're just having a chat, really. But um, we don't do it by you just have to have it all done. You, we can bring it in, and we can find out what's wrong with it, and then you don't, you haven't spent a fortune, you, yeah. you know. So you can at least then make a decision on what the what you know what the solution is. And sometimes, you know, as we said, sometimes most cars are just actually just simple things. You know, but I'll be honest with you that if you wet the wet carpets and all that is more than you, often people realise. You think, well, it will dry and all that, and you kind of not try and switch your mind off. But you know, the reality is, if the carpet's wet, then the seat's got to come undone. You've got to get the seat up to get the foam up, because most people don't realise you've got probably four inches of thick foam. The little cars, little cheaper cars, have a thinner foam, so I don't want to tell you all that. Um, but even so, even if it's thinner foam, it just you just need to get that carpet up and get the air under it. Yeah. And dry and what do you it. use? Do you use an industrial style heater then for that? Or uh, we've got very loads of different kit for different things. Actually, we seem to have over the years we've kind of got all sorts of kit. We've got several different kinds of dryer, dehumidifiers. 
let me just tell you the right do, tool for the right we've job. We've got four dehumidifiers. We've yeah. got special pipe ones now that are brilliant. You can pipe the hot dehumidified air. We've got uh, very, very, very powerful three phase blowers that blow serious amounts of heat into places. Uh, it's when I say serious amounts of heat, it's not so that you can't put your hand in there. You can't burn things. But it's it's blowing a, an eight inch pipe at, pipe at high velocity air, yeah. And that's you. We use that. That works very well for certain types of foam carpets and varying things. Uh, we've even got a smaller one. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's um, it's like a vacuum cleaner, but with a small hose, only the same size as one of those little Henrys. Only it's very very powerful. You poke that in an area and then turn it on, and it goes. Whoo! And you know it really pushes a lot of air in a concentrated yeah. area. So yeah, so we've got a lot of ways of drying it. Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. Well, um, is there anything else you want to add to it? Really? I mean, um, I guess there's not really much more we can talk about uh, when it comes to water leaks. As we said earlier on, it's not exactly the most exciting subject, but it does cause a lot of problems for people. Uh, and ultimately, um, with you having done this and your expertise, is there anything else really that you want to add, or are we, shall we close up for the rest and? Point them to your website, and so if they do have a problem uh, or they are interested in getting their, their water leak fixed, well, they know where to come. Uh, yeah, I think we'll round it up, really. Uh, I can just give you a couple of little pointers. We've got a DIY video, so have a look at that if you're out of the area. I definitely recommend do that before and you And where can I find anything. that? That's on our water leak page. So if you oh, go new- on our website, newagain.co.uk, and then uh, just find the water leak finding page. And then you'll see the main video there, which is giving you our 28-point check and what we do. But below that, uh, down, it says related videos. It's right there, I mean, but it's it says DIY help and advice. So that's a that's an important one. Even if you're thinking of coming to us, you might be local. We don't like people driving all the way to us or, you know, and all it was was just a stupid pipe, you know. You, you know, we, we it's, it's, you know, you drive, people come to us from Birmingham, they they, in the past, they have, and they've come all the way down, and you say, "Oh, look, there's the grommet right there," you know, and they, yeah. you feel like, you know, so uh, and you know, you've all got people have got their own people, and you know, you trust your own garage, and you might be listening to this, so get all, you know, so go to the page, have a look at the video, get yourself informed, uh, look at the, the twenty eight point yeah. check, see what you do, and then obviously have a look at the information video and see whether it's worth um, contacting you. Or taking it further. That's it about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's all good stuff. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thanks ever so much, Gary. Thanks again for turning up and uh, imparting your amazing information tonight uh, on the New Again podcast. We're going to sign off until the next episode, which will be episode four. And so, thank you for, again for joining us and listening. And uh, we wish you a great week. So, from me, uh, Steve Jakes, it's been uh, it's been great talking to you. And from Gary, yeah, thank you very much for listening. Great. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.